One of the major lessons that we have learned in the last 10 months in 2011 is that uh, neither Al-Qaeda's ideology nor its tactics resonate with the bulk of Arab and Muslim public opinion. Millions of Arabs and Muslims have basically uh, uh, spoken in the last 10 months. They have spoken loud and clear. And their message um, is not about global jihadism. Their message is not about carrying out violent attacks against Western targets. Their message is not about uh, uh, carrying out uh, terrorist activities against uh, the West. Their message is about bread and butter. It's about freedom. It's about al-karama. Um, it's about dignity. It's about the separation of powers. Uh, what millions of Arabs and Muslims have said in the last 10 months is that they want a better future, uh, a future for their children and grandchildren. Uh, no, uh, what they have said in the last 10 months is that the West is not the enemy. Uh, their major enemies are the internal dictators and tyrants who bled Arab and Muslim societies dry uh, in the last 30, 40 years. And what we have heard and what we have seen in the last uh, 10 months testifies to uh, how we got uh, the, the, the entire story wrong in the West since 9-11. Because Al-Qaeda neither speaks for millions and millions of Arabs and Muslims, nor represents the sentiments and the hopes and aspirations of Arabs and Muslims. In fact, since 9-11, Al-Qaeda has taken hold of the American and Western imagination. Uh, and basically, in this particular sense, uh, it has served as a blinder, as a blinder to understand the weight of social and political forces in the Middle East uh, to understand the real hopes and aspirations and fears of millions of Arabs and Muslims and really what my book is all about, The Rise and Fall of Al-Qaeda, just published by Oxford University Press, is to tell the story as it is, that is how Al-Qaeda has risen in the early 1990s and how Al-Qaeda has always been a very tiny fringe player in Arab and Muslim politics and how its violent attacks on the West since the late 1990s basically have blinded Western policymakers and American policymakers who basically played into its hands. In fact, uh, I would argue that the American war on terror, and that's a flesh out very much in, in my book, The Rise and Fall of Al-Qaeda, has been the oxygen that has sustained Al-Qaeda. If it was not for the American war on terror, in fact, Al-Qaeda would have been finished by 2002, 2003.